Okay, so this machine is running about as well as I can get it to run. And um, I want to celebrate by trying to um, make a new machine. So I've been thinking about this a little bit. No, in fact, I've been thinking about this a lot. And, uh, and I've been starting to work on a, on a design. A design based upon the Open Builds platform. I have used their C-beam and V-wheel extrusions in the past to improve the original X-carve, but this time I want to work with their platform to design a new machine. I did some research and found three lead screw CNC machines that I like the look of. While lead screw CNC machines are a little slower than belt driven ones, they are a lot more accurate. The first is from Open Builds Korea and is called the Rovo C-beam. You can see a lot of work has gone into producing the parts, which have a wide range of applications. The other two machines are a variation of the original open build plates. The first being the C-Beam 3030 by Ultibots and the R7 CSC by SMW3D. I'll put links to all of these in the description. As these are all based on open source designs, I can find original source files and begin editing them to produce a machine myself. I think the lead screw design is good enough to produce plates with birch ply, and for those plates to be good enough to then router new plates out of harder, more durable material. So I'm going to cut a few pieces on my CNC machine, spray them with some lacquer to try and reduce any warping or swelling of the material, and once a few open build parts arrive in the post, I will assemble the plates and check their fit against a piece of C-beam. I want to solve as many problems in this initial stage and create iterations of the plate designs which reduce parts and costs. I also want to make a machine that can cut plates accurately and at a reasonable speed. So some open build components have arrived and I'm now putting together the large Delrin v wheels and checking the accuracy of the 6mm birch ply plate. Having three v wheels on either side means the holes need to be more accurately aligned than what my belt driven CNC machine can produce. Either that or the machine screws have become skewed and are not sitting at 90 degrees against the plate. So these holes are a little bit tight. What I'm going to do is just put a nut on the opposite end and just tighten it up so that sinks in. So I'm going to have to resize these holes just because they're already a bit tight and I think in fact what I will do is design this so that these are going to be flanged uh, machine screws as opposed to these dome socket ones just so there's a bit more purchase on the material that I'm using as a plate. I mean I'm going to double this up eventually using much longer machine screw so there'll be a lot more support so again this is going to be on the opposite side as well so, if that goes. so I'll be able to have a proximity sensor attached onto here and it will sense the plate I'm going to add some wheels onto this section and just see how it fits on the C-beam as well. Seventeen, fifteen point eight. 
So because I need to recess these eccentric spacers down, um, this larger V roll is actually about a millimeter higher than the mini ones, and it's forcing the plate to come out a little bit from the C beam. So that's going to have to be the first modification to the design that I'm going to do after this test. Um, I still prefer the idea of making this with 12 mm and I already had cut some out but I'm in a little bit of predicament because I need to make sure I get the right machine screws so they don't scratch onto the inside of the C-beam. What I might end up doing is just buying larger machine screws than I need and cutting them down after they've been secured. It's not ideal but at least that will guarantee that the machine screws are being held securely in the nylon nuts. And as you can see now these ones are actually a little bit shy from where the nylon actually is. So I can get 35mm machine screws and what, I, what I'll have to do is pack out the, the back with some washers. Um, it's not ideal but that 2 mil, two extra mil is enough to hit the inside of the C-beam. Okay, I've worked out the spacing um, for the 12mm birch ply, for the 12mm birch ply. So this is pretty bang on 12 mil. I'm not sure how much variation you get over different type of stock, but anyway. And that feels really good. And I still haven't put the top pieces on because I still have to recess uh, the next plate. But I think I'm going to go with the 12 mil. It's just a lot more sturdier. And it's going to produce a much better machine in the long term. The extra material holding the machine screws square really makes a difference compared to the 6mm ply. I also don't think I'll need as many mini V wheels as I was planning to use in this section. So I will be using 4 mini wheels plus 2 larger ones on top of the C-beam for either plane. Just so I can explain a little bit about this design, uh, this is where the nut uh, goes and you have an opening here to access that. I've also added a hang down here so a uh, piece of aluminum extrusion can go across the bottom of the wasteboard. This plate is going to be supported with a C-beam at the top and a piece of extrusion at the bottom so it's going to square it up really really well. The final thing I want to do in this video is check the spacing for the XL C-beam gantry plates which I'm planning on doubling up. Some larger machine screws came in the post so I can assemble this and check the spacing. The holes on this plate are wrong but these are a little bit longer so I, I should be able to mock up the spacing at least. What I'm going to do is use a washer um, just to make sure the head of the machine screw doesn't accidentally pop into the holes. I'm only going to do the outer ones in this case. And then, based on this drawing here that I have, you can sort of see that I've got the spacing and layout of the wheels, the spacing and the shims, which will make the distance I need. Is it going to be another plate on the other side? Yeah, so, yeah. so the layout is like that one there. Wow, so. that has to be pretty accurate then. I mean, yeah. in terms of what goes between the wheels. Well, yeah, that's the thing. I kind of like found um, the spacing like uh, instruction somewhere. I think it was that Martin Balford had did something mm. where he kind of like done a close-up. 
so I kind of did a drawing of that. But essentially it would be the same instructions with the ox and all the other sort of open build machines. Yeah. You know. So if I sink the heads of the machine screws 5mm into the ply on one side, I don't have to make any recesses on the opposite piece and the machine screw will extend out the same size as the nylon locking nuts. So I'm quickly discovering that a lot of the plates that I sort of hastily cut are completely useless but because I have something to play around with I can learn lessons from uh, these experiments. Okay, so the other thing I need to do is decide what holes I want to keep because there's not really any point having this many. I'll also need to place the machine screws through the gantry plate which would hold the z-axis and check if the heads scratch or hit onto anything. So there is a 1mm gap between the machine screw and the C-beam which is perfect. Now I can go back to the computer and amend the plate vector files. So for the foreseeable future I will be focusing on building a new CNC machine on this channel. If you like to follow the process you can subscribe. Or if you are already a subscriber please consider sacrificing a thumb and letting me know what you think of the video in the comment section below. If you'd like to support the project and channel, you can also find me on Patreon, the link to which will be on screen and in the description. Anyway, thanks again for watching and you'll catch me in the future.